Okay, so that brings us right into absolute and relative change. Absolute and relative change um, are essentially just like we just did, finding the percent decrease or percent increase, a kind of a percentage. Um, that's the relative change. But the absolute change is the actual dollar amount. It has units, it has the same units as your problem, whereas relative change has no units, it's a percent. And um, we always start, again, our base amount is always going to be the starting amount or the initial amount given in the problem. So let me go ahead and write that out. So absolute change, again, is the, is the same units as the original quantity, whereas relative unit, relative change is a percent. So it has no units, it has the percent on, um, symbol on it. So um, anything that we do, we'll have to go ahead and rewrite it as a percent change. So we'll get a decimal and then we'll move the decimal over twice and then get a percent change. Okay, so this next example, it states that the U.S. federal debt at the end of 2001 was 5.77 trillion and grew to 6.2 trillion by at the end of 2002. At the end of 2005, it was 7.91 and grew to 8.45 trillion by the end of 2006. Calculate the absolute and relative increase between these two different um, years and which saw a larger increase. So we have two pieces, right? We have the first piece here from 2001, 2002, and then 2005 to 2006. So, um, and again, the starting quantity is going to be, um, let me do that in green. This base quantity or starting quantity will be that first initial amount at the beginning of the year. So in 2001, that would be 5.77, and in 2005, it's 7.91. So just because there was a dollar amount change doesn't necessarily mean that that was the year that it had a larger increase. Because what if there were um, more people born in 2000, in between 2002 and 2005, in which created more deficit um, and more, we needed more taxes and people, more people retiring. So all those pieces come into tax. So it not, it doesn't really help to look at the absolute change, which is the dollar amount, but we can still look at it. But the percent is what's going to, to really show us, right? That percent increase, um, because they're all different amounts. However, the units here are in dollars and trillions. So we don't have to rewrite trillion with nine zeros after or anything like that. We can just leave everything and then acknowledge in the end that we're working in trillions of dollars. So there's going to be two cases here, one for 2001, one 2002. Okay, let's go ahead and find, um, and then 2005, 2006. So let's go ahead and find the absolute change here. So the absolute change here would just be the ending quantity minus the starting quantity in absolute values, hence the word absolute, right? So ending quantity was 6.2 trillion minus 5.77 trillion. Okay, so um, doing that, we would get uh, 0.43, because it would be 0.23 plus point minus uh, plus 20.43. Again, trillion dollars. Okay, now let's go ahead and find the absolute change for 2005-2006. I want to do one at a time. Okay, so the ending quantity was 8.45 minus 7.91 and that was equal to 0.54 and then trillion dollars. Leave everything in trillion because that's what we started with so we'll end with it. Now, right away, we do compare these two, and right away, we want to say, oh, 2005, 2006 had a larger increase. It appears so with the absolute change, doesn't it? But again, these amounts are different, 
And um, also the, the number of people that are contributing to the deficit changed. You know, there's so many factors that go into the deficit. Um, and so it does look like in dollar amounts that 2005, 2006 was in fact had the larger dollar amount increase. But let's look at now the relative change. So the relative change would be this absolute change of 0.43 divided by that starting quantity, which was 5.77. So if I went ahead and put that in the calculator, 0.43. Mom, Jesse's working. 0.43 divided by 5.77. And so we get this like long decimal, but what I would like to do is probably round again to three or four decimals. Um, we can do three decimals, I think that's fine. So if we do three decimal places to the right of the decimal, we get one, two, three, so we're at the four. So if we want to round this appropriately, then we have to look at the test digit, right? And the test digit here would be the one directly to the right of it. And since this is five and higher, then that tells us that we have to take our digit and make up it by one. So we'll round 0 0.075. All right, so now let's do it for the next year they give us, which is 2005 to 2006. So the absolute change was 0.54, and we divide that by the original amount, which is 7.91. So let's go back to the calculator. We'll have 0.54 divided by 7.91. And here we can round to three decimal places again, so that it's at the eight. So the test digit would be the test the digit right to the right of it, which is two. That's less than five, so we just keep it the same. So 0 0.068. If I change these each to the percent, I could see that this is going to be 7.5 percent right because again you're moving the decimal over twice and over here for 2005 2006 would be 1 to 6.8 percent so let me highlight these so then what does this tell us well it says originally that we saw the absolute change we saw 2005 2006 have a larger increase amount in dollar and trillions of dollars but in actuality when we take it when we look at the percent increase there was a larger percent increase in 2001 2002 so when it says which year saw a larger increase in federal debt the increase part has to be in 2001 2002 so our our deficit actually got better in 2005 and 2006 so here um, we would say that in 2001 to 2002 we saw a larger in a larger increase in federal debt. Okay, so if we go ahead and take this one step further, and I love this next example because it gives us percents and percents. Like how are we supposed to find an absolute change right, for percents of a percent? And how about a relative change of a percent of a percent? So I need to find a percent from a difference of a percent of a percent, right? Well, yeah, because that's how we just came from an election, lots of data with the pandemic, lots of percents, right? But we want to see the percent change or the percent change, all these graphs, right? So we want a better understanding of how we can use percents and work with percents no matter how like crazy it looks, right?
So this is just one example. Let's say a politician's support increases from 40% to 50%. Uh, voters describe the change. There's two ways we can describe the change, right? We can describe the absolute change, right? Just the percent difference, right? And we can also find the relative change. So let's do that. So the first thing I want to do is find the absolute change. Okay, and that's just the ending value. So 50% minus the 40% which is 10%. So the absolute change is 10%, right? And then we could say the relative change, so there was a 10% difference of voters, right? They got uh, an increased 10% of voters, right? But then let's describe the relative change now. So the relative change is the absolute change, 10%, divided by the initial amount of voters, which is 40%. So if I go ahead and reduce this a little bit, I notice percent symbols can reduce out, zeros reduce out, and I'm left with one-fourth. Well, one-fourth is a quarter, right? So that's 0.25, and then that's equivalent to 25%. So we do know that there was a an actuality of a 25% increase in voters overall, even though the number of voters for the politician increased 10%. So recall that the absolute change is the same units as the original quantity. So we would say that the number of voters increased by 10% and there was a 25% increase in votes.